Today's lesson is on surface areas of pyramids and cones. Take a minute to read over the learning goal and scale. Find where you are on the scale before we begin the lesson. To find the surface area of a three-dimensional figure, we find the sum of the areas of all the surfaces of the figure. A pyramid is a polyhedron in which one face, the base, can be any polygon. The other faces, the lateral faces, are triangles that meet at a common vertex. We name a pyramid by the shape of its base. This pyramid has a base that is a hexagon, so it is a hexagonal pyramid. This pyramid has a base that is a square, so it is a square pyramid. The altitude of a pyramid is the perpendicular segment from the vertex to the base. The height of a pyramid is the length of the altitude. A regular pyramid is a pyramid whose base is a regular polygon and lateral faces are congruent isosceles triangles. The slant height, represented with a lowercase cursive L, is the length of the altitude of the lateral face. The lateral area of a pyramid is a sum of the congruent lateral faces. You can find the lateral area of a pyramid by looking at the net. To find the surface area of a pyramid, add the area of the base to the lateral area. The formula for the lateral area of a pyramid is one half the perimeter of the base times the slant height. To find the surface area, the formula is the lateral area plus the area of the base. Remember, the formulas only help if you can remember them. If you can't remember the formula, don't use them. Instead, use the net. In example one, we will find the surface area of a pyramid. What is the surface area of the hexagonal pyramid? Let's start with the formula for surface area, the lateral area plus the area of the base. To find the lateral area, we will take the perimeter of the base times the slant height divided by two. The perimeter is 36 since there are six sides, each with a length of six inches. The slant height is nine, and the area of the base is the perimeter of the hexagon, so 36, times the apothem, 3 radical 3, divided by 2. So the area of the base is 54 radical 3. The lateral area, 36 times 9 divided by 2, is 162 inches squared, plus the area of the base, which is approximately 93.531, will give us a surface area of 255.531. So the surface area of the hexagonal pyramid is approximately 256 square inches. Pause the video and do U-trend number one. In part A, a square pyramid has base edges of five meters and a slant height of three meters. What is the surface area of the pyramid? Let's begin by finding the lateral area. It is going to be the base five times the slant height 3 divided by 2, and there are 4 of those triangles. The lateral area, 4 times 5 times 3, divided by 2, is 30. Now let's find the area of the base, so it will be 5 times 5, or 25. The surface area is 30 plus 25, or 55 meters squared. For part B, suppose the slant height of the pyramid is doubled. How does this affect the lateral area of the pyramid? Let's use the same pyramid above, but double the slant height so that it is 6 meters instead of 3. So the lateral area is 4 times 5 times 6 divided by 2, or 60 meters squared. Compared to the lateral area in the first part of the question, when we double the slant height, the lateral area is doubled. If the slant height of a pyramid is not given, we must calculate it before we can find the lateral area or surface area. In example two, we will find the lateral area of a pyramid. The Pyramid of Cestius is located in Rome, Italy. Using the dimensions in the figure below, what is the lateral area of the pyramid to the nearest square meter? Let's begin with the formula for the lateral area, the perimeter times the slant height divided by two. Notice that the slant height or the length of segment BA is not given. However, we know the height is 30, and we know that the length of segment CA is going to be half the length of the base, or 15. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem, 36.4 squared plus 15 squared will equal the slant height squared. 
So the slant height is approximately 39.3695 meters. The perimeter of the base will be 30 times 4 since we have a square base, which is 120 meters. Let's substitute 120 in for the perimeter, 39.3695 in for the slant height, divide by 2 to find the lateral area. The lateral area is 2,362.1719 or about 2,362 square meters. Pause the video and do u trend number 2. For part A, what is the lateral area of the hexagonal pyramid? Round to the nearest square foot. Let's start with the formula for the lateral area. The perimeter times the slant height divided by 2. To find the perimeter, there are 6 congruent sides, each being 36 feet long, so 6 times 36, or 216 feet. Because the slant height isn't given, we will need to use the Pythagorean theorem. So 42 squared plus 18 radical 3 squared will give us the slant height squared. The slant height is approximately 52.32. Now let's multiply the slant height times the perimeter and divide by 2. Rounded to the nearest square foot, we will have 5,649 square feet. For part B, how does the slant height of a regular pyramid relate to its height? The slant height is the hypotenuse of this right triangle formed with the height and the apothem, or in a square pyramid's case, half the base. So the slant height will always be longer than the actual height. A cone is a solid that has one base and a vertex that is not in the same plane as the base. The base of a cone is a circle. In a right cone, the altitude is the perpendicular segment from the vertex to the center of the base. The height of the cone is the length of its altitude. The slant height is the distance from the vertex to a point on the edge of the base. The formula for finding the lateral area of a cone is half the circumference times the slant height, or pi r, pi times the radius, times the slant height. The formula for finding the surface area of the cone is the sum of the lateral area plus the area of the base. So it will be pi times the radius times the slant height plus pi times the radius squared. In all the problems that we'll do in our examples and practice, we can assume that the cones are right cones unless stated or otherwise pictured. In example three, we will find the surface area of a cone. What is the surface area of the cone in terms of pi? Let's start with the formula for the surface area, which is the lateral area plus the area of the base. To find the lateral area, we will take pi times the radius times the slant height. Let's substitute 15 in for the radius and 25 for the slant height. Pi times 15 times 25 is 375 pi. To find the area of the base, we will use the formula pi times the radius squared. Again, substitute 15 in for the radius. The area of the base will be 225 pi. Now let's substitute 375 pi in for the lateral area and 225 pi in for the area of the base. Now let's add the two together and we will have 600 pi centimeters squared. Pause the video and do u trend number 3. The radius of the base of a cone is 16 meters. The slant height is 28 meters. What is the surface area in terms of pi? Let's start with the formula for finding the surface area, which is the lateral area plus the area of the base. To find the lateral area of a cone, we will take pi times the radius times the slant height. We'll substitute 16 for the radius and 28 for the slant height. So the lateral area is 16 times 28 pi, or 448 pi. To find the area of the base, we will use pi times the radius squared. Again, we will substitute 16 in for the length of the radius, 
and 16 squared times pi is 256 pi. Now let's substitute 448 pi in for the surface area, lateral area and 256 pi in for the area of the base. 448 pi plus 256 pi is 704 pi. So the surface area of the cone in terms of pi is 704 pi meters squared. In example four, we will find the lateral area of a cone. In a chemistry lab experiment, you use the conical filter funnel shown. How much filter paper do you need to line the funnel? Let's start with the formula for the lateral area. Lateral area equals pi times the radius times the slant height. The radius is going to be half of the diameter, or 40 millimeters. And to find the slant height, we will have to use the Pythagorean theorem. 40 squared plus 45 squared will equal the slant height squared. The slant height is approximately 60.208. 60 times 208 times 40 is 2408.319 approximately. And times pi, this time we'll use the pi key on the calculator, gives us 7565.96 which is approximately 7,566 square millimeters. Pause the video and do U-try number four. For part A, what is the lateral area of a traffic cone with radius 10 inches and height 28 inches? Round to the nearest whole number. Let's start with the formula for the lateral area, pi times the radius times the slant height. We can substitute 10 in for the radius, but we're going to have to find the slant height. Let's use 10 and 28 as the legs and L for the length of the hypotenuse or the slant height. The slant height is approximately 29.73, so we'll substitute that in for slant height. 29.73 times 10 times pi is approximately 934.06. Round it to the nearest whole number, that's 934 inches squared. For part B, suppose the radius of the cone is halved, but the slant height stays the same. How does this affect the lateral area of the cone? We'll start with the formula for the lateral area, pi times the radius times the slant height. We'll take half of the radius, or 5, but keep the slant height the same, 29.73. 29.73 times 5 times pi is approximately 466.98, or 467 inches squared. 467 is half of 934, so when the radius is halved, the lateral area is also halved. Now is your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and do the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If you have any questions about the lesson check, please be sure to ask me in class. If you're really ready to test your skills, take a minute and try the challenge question. Now take another minute to reread the learning goal and scale. Have you climbed any higher on the scale than where you were before we began the lesson? Here's the answer to the challenge question.